Hey everybody, I'm Brandon Phillips, and I'm here with Captain Kyle McKenna, Brian Taylor, and Kerry Taylor. And we are the BKBK Podcast, where right. sports and the culture collide, and the New York Jets reign supreme. You. Now, this past week has been gut-wrenching as well as euphoric for everyone that's in the gangrene universe. The new year, uh, the, the new NFL year began this week, thus the start of the 2019 NFL free agency period. As a result, this will also be the start of BKBK Podcast's second season. So, woo! That's right, right baby. Two. Right. Yeah, two. yeah, yeah. Two. yeah. Two. Let's yeah. go. All righty, and I just want to just give a shout-out to my fellow co-host, man. Great job. Uh, you know, we're just climbing and building, and uh, I just love being a part of this with you guys. And uh, yeah, I, we just couldn't have just a better, a, 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 a better set of guys doing this show, man. And I just happen to just love it. Um, so, all right, now pressing on, um, we're going to start off season two here at the BKBK podcast, projecting out into the football universe of what we think needed to happen for the New York Jets during free agency to be considered having a successful free agency period. Did they? Let's talk about it. Not oh, hold on. Carrie, you shaking your head you over said there. no, huh? Not at all. <laughs> what? Whoa. We got a, we got a detractor. We, oh. right, we, we, got, we almost got there. We almost got there. We needed a pass rusher. Uh, we did not obtain one. And we did retain, we did retain Henry Anderson, which I, I do like. I like that, that re-signing um, for a reasonable amount of money. But I think that was after the whole bar debacle. So uh, although Barr wasn't a proven pass rusher to the extent that he had double-digit figures, he still was a player that um, we could plug and, and, and make him into someone who just pinned his, his ears back and uh, for the purpose of passing, um, being a, rush, a pass rusher hmm. on the opposite side of um, Big Cat. So you know, I think that's where we fell short. I so, think so. I, what, what 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 kind of grade do you put on it? If if you're saying that we because we fell we, short because we we because we were able to obtain Le'Veon Bell, I st- I'm still giving them a B plus. I think if we would have signed Barr, you can't think, shake your head at a B plus though. No, nah, not at all. And you I, came I, off like you right. was depressed or something. Well, yeah. not depressed, <laughs> not depressed. I'm just saying. I thought I'm there disapp- was spilt milk, and that's what you about. To I'm go not clean crying over spilled sure. spill milk, but I clean it up. But again, <laughs> I, I think that we should have, we should have been able to retain Barr, and I don't, and I don't know if he was playing us against the Vikings, you know. You can't retain somebody that don't want to marry you. I mean, you know, it, it kind of. I'm not. You know, I'm not saying it's that, their fault. I'm not saying it's just fault. I'm just saying it well, just stinks of of what, what well, some of the things that we've seen in the past with the Jets. But yeah, but, but it was like an on, episode of The Bachelor. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. long term, <laughs> long, long term, I feel like it, it was. Listen, we're not winners. We we haven't been as a team. So when people. You know, if, if they was the Patriots, I don't think he says I have an upset stomach and I'm going to go back to the Vikings, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I think what we've done long-term losing is situations where we have to overpay for free agents to come here. And sometimes, even when we overpay them, they decide, you know, buyer's remorse. And mm-hmm. he had an opportunity yeah. to go back to his team. Right. I can't blame him as an individual to say, you know what, this is not the right situation. I don't want him on my team. They don't, if that's they don't, what you, say, they don't put it out there that you're going to sign, that you're signing with the Jets. Well, I mean, that's the problem. It happens. You know, though, people I mean, decide on verbal, jobs. You know? yeah, it, 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 yeah. it was a verbal agreement. It was highly disappointing. I mean, that sure. actually tweaks me. You know, I'm kind of doing a little foreshadowing here. But that tweaked me out. But, you know, look at uh, what was the coach in New England. He did the same thing to Indianapolis. He made an agreement, and then at the 11th hour, he reneged. He didn't mm-hmm. sign any papers, and then he went back to yeah, uh, absolutely. New England ended up winning a Super Bowl. Josh, Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels, yeah. exactly. Look, look at Bill Belichick, you know, with the Jets. Right. I mean, you know. Oh, let, I mean, let, let's, oh, hey. You got to bring that up? I'm going to bring it up, but this is this is a Jets podcast, right? You bring it up. Yeah. But, I, but what I say on the opposite side is that we were able to sign Bell, and we didn't really overpay for him. Nope. He signed for less than what right. the um, Steelers, Steelers – Offered. Yep. So I think that I think that's a win. I, I think that you know that that pushes me over the edge to making it a B plus instead of a B minus. So what would have made it? Um, basically, uh, how about this? Mm-hmm. Let me let me rephrase. Mm-hmm. What were the top three objectives that the Jets needed to accomplish 
or the top three goals to make this a successful uh, uh, draft for you? Top for, three. For me? For you personally. Draft free agent, or free, free agency? I'm free sorry. Agency. Free agency. My bad. So free for agency. Me, for me, it would have been signing a center yeah. first, yeah. Bell, and then a pass rusher. Bell was and, my number one. And probably okay. in that order. Gotcha. gotcha. But, you know, listen, like, yeah, going back to probably the first podcast that we had, mm-hmm. the guy that was standing with Bell. Levy and Bell yeah, was, yeah. was this guy right here, right? Yeah. I, don't um, th- I don't think I agreed with you at the time. N- yeah, you didn't. You did. I did not. Um, I, I, I think Kyle, Kyle, Kyle was there. I think, I think, I think Kyle was there. I think it was yeah. you and Kyle, but you definitely. Yeah. I started to fall in line later on. Who's going to help? Like waving the banner. Yeah, for yeah. Yes, who is going to help? Absolutely. And this at this point in time, we didn't know it was going to be Sam Darnold, but mm-hmm. who is going to help our, our young quarterback, young quarterback more than anybody else that was on the free agent market? Yes. I feel like you guys think that because Yes, I'm coming. I thought he was going to be the second I also want to say, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, definitely, go ahead. <laughs> just, not, just saying. Not me, fall um, short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to answer Brandon's question, I think that Le'Veon Bell is the most complete back in the NFL. Um, he may not be the best running back, but a um, big part of Le'Veon Bell's argument all along here was that he, to – to franchise tag him at running back would be to downplay his ultimate skill set. So most complete running back, maybe not the best running back, but he does more than most running backs do. Uh, I've heard all of you guys say it best slot in the free agent class for sure. Maybe the best slot in the league. So um, we got a guy that can do multiple 80, 85 things. 85 catches. And, 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 yep. 85 yeah. catches. He, five catches less than, um, his teammate at the time, who is now with the Raiders. Yeah. Um, but nobody's mentioning C.J. Mosley. Like, did we just skip completely no, over no, no, that? I, as absolutely a, not. You know, like, I mean, we're but, still kind of talking about yeah, Bell. Yeah, right. But, but we went to the slot first, so that's, that's the only yeah, reason why get I said to him yet. The last thing I want to say about Bell is this. Why I'm excited about him being here is because he said that our leader – Jamal Adams is the reason that he is here. I did that. That says I didn't hear that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. He said he said in in no uncertain terms, I am here because Jamal Adams brought me here. He was hitting him on Twitter. He was hitting him on IG. Like I I saw all of that stuff going back and forth. Like, listen, come come to us, bro. Like you know, come over here. You know, so so really that leadership that he showed, the recruiting that he did. You know, he mentioned that. Uh, right. it's, it's crazy it's crazy yeah. to have that type of leader Find, on your finding team. that out finding that out right now makes me actually a little salty that we didn't pick pat mahomes with that pick and we picked jamal adams because it's, it's actually paying dividends 
later on. Just a little. Uh, whenever, <laughs> just, whenever just I a think snake, of where we just take a touch. Ah, just a touch. A little less salty. Yeah. <laughs> just a touch. Just twins less salty. Right. Well, like kosher salt instead of sea salt. <laughs> so, <laughs> like kosher salt, big grain too. Yeah. <laughs> Fine as opposed to coarse. Funny. So you got, listen, so so Anthony Barr, I mean, you know, obviously that was a loss. And, right. and Brandon was sending the what our linebacking group could look like with Mosley. He, I don't think he had committed to us yet, but Mosley mm, was out there. Right, right, Barr was yeah. out there. Maybe a Josh Allen and drafting him coming on the left-hand side there, mm. too, with Williamson. Uh, I mean, what kind of four? So we were really sick. disappointed. It would have been yeah. ridiculous. So so we sick were disappointed because I mean. we were already cashing those checks, right? We yeah. were already sacking those quarterbacks, right? So, But when you looked at C.J. Mosley, I didn't, he wasn't even on my radar. I don't know if he was on yours. I didn't know we were shopping for inside linebackers. And I know we we paid a ton for the guy. Yeah. But 13 all, this year. But, I mean, listen, somebody that can really do a lot of things on the field and plays like a Raven. And as much as, you know, I, I, my line brother Earl Short are out there, I, I don't want to call out the Ravens, but they play tough. Football, Always. and for him to be in the middle of that team and to right. come here and th culturally change the defense from the inside, I mean that that pick right there, that signing was to me almost equal to what Le'Veon Bell brings to the table for the Jets. Just on the mm -hmm. defensive side of the ball, absolutely. And the guy's a perennial Pro Bowl. He's been to the Pro Bowl four times. He's only twenty six. Right. Alrighty. And the thing is, I have my list here. My free agency list, basically, you know, at answering the question of, you know, can this be considered having a successful free agency period? Go ahead. And this is the list that I put together. Um, we need O-line help. All righty. Specifically center and guard. We got a simile. All righty. I don't even know if talk about him yet right. either. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, that was a great acquisition. Great job by McCagnan. Yeah. Right. You know, we we, we got to give it up. To another him when, former All Pro. Another. By former, the way, so now exactly. we have three people former All Pro. Okay. Exactly. All righty. We have a franchise quarterback. You need bodyguards for him. Yep. That is a tried and true bodyguard. I wish we got a center. Okay, but we didn't get it. But that yes, was very but important. There's, but there's still some quality out there that, that maybe is potential. So. And we, we re-signed Harrison, that. right? So Jonathan Harrison. Maybe right. they yes. felt a little bit better about Harrison than mm -hmm. we. And, and, um, and he performed. But, he performed well down the stretch. Yeah, he didn't absolutely. Do well. he, he 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 didn't do too bad. So yeah. that that's that's fine. I, we still need to see more. And that's you know I'm still disappointed, but whatever. Regardless, did they re-sign him to be the starter though? I mean, they didn't say. No, is, they didn't say. I mean, they gave I, 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 still think, money. I still think we're. Was it starter money? They gave him they, starter money. No. Was it? No, yeah. it wasn't starter money. Hold on a second. Well, I'll put it to you this the, way. When you say starter money, what are you, what are you talking about as a center? Nine million a like year? Nine million a year. I think it was something around that. That's it was the market not, right now. It was That's not nine million a year. It, it Let's definitely see. wasn't. No give, me, give me a second. I'm sorry. Keep talking. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves. So basically, you have a franchise quarterback. You need your bodyguards. Therefore, you need your center and your interior guards. Yep. Okay. So we got the guard. We missed out on the center. All righty. Uh, pass rusher. Okay. I'll talk about that later. But pass rusher, that needs to happen. Running back. Le'Veon Bell <coughs> signing. Right? Or at least another young proven running back as, a as, as our second option. Hey, we got the gold. We got Le'Veon. All righty. We needed a slot wide receiver. Okay. We got Le'Veon. And then also... A guy that we didn't talk to or talk about too much At was, was Jamison Crowder. Yeah, and I had him in fantasy, mm -hmm. not last year, but the year before that, and he was me too providing dividends yeah. for me. I was like, oh, this guy's all right. Yeah. And they keep talking about how good this guy is. They're saying that he is actually the best slot receiver that was available in free agency. Yep, better than um, Humphreys, uh, uh, better than uh, Golden Tate, and those are the two mm. guys that I had my eye on, and they say that. The kid is a burner. He can catch things over the middle and just rock it on into the end zone. And he just has this sticky hands, man. Sticky, sticky hands, hands. yeah. He and does. he's only twenty six once again. Yeah. All right. Um, Crowder. 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 Yeah. 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 John. Uh, by the way, Jonathan Harrison, two years, six million. So that's three million a year. Yeah. That's um, backup money. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's backup not money. That's backup, money. That's yeah. backup money. Brandon yeah. Shell is is going to be our starter. He's making less than that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Late late round draft. Yeah, Brandon Shell's. Brandon Shell's still on a rookie deal, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's yes, on a rookie he deal. Yeah. He's yep. on a rookie yep. deal. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and so. and then now, um, uh, re-signing. There's specific players that for me, I I wanted to uh, have re-signed. I wanted Anderson, Henry Anderson. All righty, which we got, thank goodness. 
But you know what? We missed out on Jason Myers and um, Andre Roberts, who right. were our tough. pro bowlers. That's tough. And Andre Roberts was a – he was an all-pro. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, every time we talk about kick returners, I look I look to my right and I, I see Brian. And it's like <laughs> – Brian puts, like, really significant importance on kick returners. Absolutely. As well he should. Yeah. As well he should because he loves to talk about who's your guy that you can't stand uh returning kicks. Jojo Natson? No, 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 <laughs> oh, no. No, he was a no. former Jet uh Good Lord. Curly. Yes. Yeah, because all Curly would do was just like wave the it down. Catch a fair catch and the then fair that's catch. it. Not do anything <laughs> oh, with it. Oh my God. He was like, we gotta get rid of Curly. <laughs> Gee whiz. Jeremy Curly. So, <laughs> he, Jojo Jojo Natson went to the Super Bowl this year, so your jokes on us with Jojo Nathan. Sure. Yeah, that. And then my last two Jojo cornerback, which we basically, for the most part, didn't address because we need a we good pool. slot corner. We got we pool. got pool, but I, they're saying that he's not even that great. It's okay. No, he's he's available. He's not. He's right. available. Like you know, that's mm -hmm. the the best uh, availability. Well, the best ability is availability. availability. Right. So yeah. he plays a lot and um, busts a screen. You know, he's he had some issues with health. So yeah, I'll go with that. And then we need a number two corner to replace Claiborne. I mean. I wouldn't mind re-signing Claiborne again, to be honest, for a short-term deal. Have you, have you guys seen some of the mocks lately? Uh I'll be, I'll be upset, upset, if, they I'll pick be upset if we pick a corner. You know, you know just like uh, you said, I, be, I, 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 I wouldn't be upset about it if we if if it's after two trade backs and a boatload of picks. No, I, yes, yes, but if we're yeah, if we have multiple second round picks, um, and maybe even multiple first round picks because we traded back. I mean, I don't know how those things are going to play out, but um, sometimes it's like buying houses. You know, sometimes you want to be in a, a seller's market in the draft too, where you can, you can take advantage of the fact that there's not a lot of people up top that are going to try to get a, a corner because, you know, we need long-term solutions at corner. We don't need short-term ones. Yeah. I would still, opinion. I would still, I would still, we have plenty of cap space left. So I would still bring back or try to bring back Claiborne. On, under reasonable terms. I agree. I would too. Um, I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I would too. Yeah. And so, what I would also say is, you know, since we talk, we, we you know talked a little bit about the draft, if we can get a center that is a reasonable, that we feel a little bit excited about, that's still on the free agency market, then we absolutely have to pick, um, keep our pick then, I think. Really? At three. Nah. Because because I, because I'm I'm I like our options at the top three at pass rusher and defensive line, man. That just it just would change. I, it would I, change the. It would just change the dynamic of this team. Oh yeah, you know? Josh Josh Allen is Josh is my pick Allen? at number three. Uh, oh, Williams? I did. I I, I watched oh, some highlights gosh. of um uh Quentin Williams. So can I play the uh, the Adam Gase role for a second? Yeah, sure as as I was you know kind of watching that <laughs> going. Yeah, sure, right? yeah, can I play yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. Well, Look at the taco. Hold on, hold on. So, so, so my name is Adam Gase, and I'm watching the highlights oh, of uh, no, Quinn and Williams, didn't. and I'm like, this guy is crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Let's judge him right now. Yeah. Hold on, yo, B, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this, but uh, you got to uh, like that. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, no, I just saw that. I just saw that on the delay on the live feed, and yeah. uh, the build up to that is crazy oh, good. Yeah. It's crazy good. Yeah. My brother, that's my right. Brother's going straight. We did it. We did it. We did place, not so, to heaven. So so. All right, so, uh, so I go, I go back to Brian for a second. All right, so uh, last year when uh, we sat down and we were looking at the free agency period last year, right? Um, I, I, that was building up for weeks. Man, I've been uh, on Amazon. I'm like, oh, I forgot uh, to order. Oh, uh, I finally did it, right? So, um. So last year, we actually said after the free agency period that we actually, it was pretty good, right? And we said that. So yeah. this, this is what pretty good looked like. Teddy Bridgewater, who we flipped for a pick, mm -hmm. um, never really started a game for us. Um, Claiborne, right? So we picked mm -hmm. him up. Isaiah Crowell, 
But you got some released. value from which now we're releasing at the end of the day. Dead yep. money. Um, Tremaine Johnson. Henry Anderson. That was a that trade. Was trade. That was a trade. But yes, that right, still right, counts. Right, right. Still counts. Henry Anderson. Tremaine Johnson, who, right. who I, paid I didn't bills. feel excellent about, but I, I felt like, oh, you had to pick the top rated at the time. I didn't want um, And I know Brandon did not want him at all. Yeah. Um, and then you got Spencer Long. Mm-hmm. Bust. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, you got Josh McCown, who will coach. be a coach, coach soon coming. Mm. Uh, so, and you got Terrell Pryor, who did virtually nothing for us. Avery Williamson, love it, right? So you love that pickup right. there, love it. Um, not an all pro, but I mean, middle. hey man, did that did guy his and thing. Mosley together in the middle. So when you think about last year, and we felt pretty. Warm and fuzzy about what McCagnan did last year, right? I mean, I can be honest myself. Now, when I look back on it, the grade I'd give it was like a D minus at the end of the day, minus Avery Williamson. Uh, but you have Andre Roberts in there too, who turned into a pro bowler. So you have to put that in there. His his kicker turned Neville into a Hewitt. pro bowler. Um, I don't know too much about Nevitt and what he did this year, right? So backup line, back, he, back he, played, he played good at the end of the year. Yeah, played good at the end of the year. He was he had a, a suspension. In the beginning, Him. and then when he got on the field, he was all right. He that did. that's gonna w- wind up being a decent free agent signing. I think. So I and say Louisville all the, too. Yeah, and Louisville's out there too. So I, and, that, and that's an undrafted free agent, right? So you mm-hmm. got all of that as far as the off season. If you put it as a whole, minus the draft. But when you look at this year, what was missing last year were all pros, right? Yeah. None of those players were all pro players, except for Andre Roberts. He wasn't an all pro at the time. And not no. at the time. After. That's yeah. Right? That's after, right? That's true. So now you're talking about all pro Mosley, all pro Le'Veon Bell. Um, there's another all pro on there I'm missing. Uh ba, 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 ba. Le'Veon Bell. CJ Mosley. Mosley. It's um, not Crowder, it's not Poole. It's not Assemble. 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 The difference between last year and this year of the talent level that we've been able to put together in the free aging period is just it's, it's phenomenal, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I like to slam McCagnan when he doesn't do a good job. This year, he did a good job, even with the the bar with bar going back right. to Minnesota. So imagine Hold if, on imagine if he would have completed that, that, that yeah. then it would have been. Yeah, there's and no grade for that. I mean, right, at that right. point. Right. Oh, right. Kerry, your brother just used the word McCagnan and phenomenal. In the same I did. sentence, I did. Wow, I did. Well, you didn't say he's phenomenally terrible. <laughs> I said, I said, for, I said for for, I said for four days, he he had an excellent four days, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, uh, right. He had a phenomenal four days. Uh, right. um, but that does I want to back up Brian a little bit on this. Go ahead, um, back it up, back it up. Back I, up. You know, I, I, I'll preface this by saying I still don't like McCagnan. Um, but looking at the the signings that we had on offense um, only. Um, we're able to do some stuff going into this year with our acquisitions from last year, whether draft or um, or carryovers and our free agent acquisitions this year, personnel wise, that are going to be interesting. So um, in common terms, 12 personnel would stand for one running back and two tight ends. Um, 21 personnel is two running backs, one tight end. Um, and this this is common calls. And when you see a lot of the substitutions that people make on defense, they'll make those defensive substitutions based on the personnel that you have coming out. So if you have a, a 10 personnel, for instance, where you have four wide receivers and one running back, you might bring out a nickel um, to do that. Our ability to run 21 personnel and 12 personnel has jumped through the roof with our acquisitions. And I'll tell you why that's a really, really good thing for the pressure we can put on a defense. When you have Le'Veon Bell, who could be a slot um, and play running back, and you have Herndon and Anunwa, who are essentially tight ends, um, because you could put Anunwa in those tight end types of situations. You can run a um, a you can run personnel, twelve personnel, without changing Anunwa out and bringing in another tight end. Wow. Now, when with I don't think that Brandon gave enough credit to Elijah McGuire. I'm a big Elijah McGuire fan. Totally. Yeah. Um, I think that the offensive sets that we're going to be able to put on the field with Elijah McGuire and Le'Veon Bell at the same time, uh, 21 personnel uh, and Herndon are going to be extremely good. 
because we're going to be able to match up Herndon and Bell on the nickel and a linebacker yep. um, and while what, still being able to run the ball. In what um, way did I not having, give McGuire enough credit? I, I, I don't understand. I can pass. It was probably me. So when, it was probably so, me, not Brandon. Because uh, I was just looking at the notes as far as like uh, signing another second option running back um, oh, in addition oh. to Bell. No, no. And, what, and in, I don't, I don't think notes, we need to do that. No, no, no. In, in, in my notes, it was basically if we could not get Bell having a second oh, option. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because basically, I misunderstood that. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Basically, uh, yeah. just to clarify, um, and I, I think I said this in our um, in our chat room, uh, if we couldn't get Bell because I didn't believe that he was going to sign with us, I was saying to myself, "All righty, we have Mosley. That means Darren Lee's gone. Maybe we can try to trade Darren Lee to Chicago and either get maybe a third rounder or maybe Jordan Howard, who mm -hmm. I happen to like quite a lot." Mm -hmm. And then Brian responded and said. A good running back, but he doesn't have hands like Le'Veon. He doesn't catch like him. But, of course, anything other than Le'Veon is going to be second level compared to him because he's a great player. It's not great, Poupon. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, um, I, I was thinking of something like that, like getting a, a, a second uh, a tier type of back, you know, that has starting. You know, the, the guy's got 2,000-yard seasons, um, in, you know, behind him. And he is a really, really good running back. But hey, you know what? We don't have to worry about that because we got uh, Le'Veon. You. But just I don't think it would be a bad that. idea to get a C.J. Anderson type to round out our because uh, we already released Isaiah Crowell. That's yeah. done. Yeah. Um, if we could get a uh, a more a more bowling ball type right. of dude, more yeah. between um, the tackles, so, between the guards type of guy. Yeah. yeah. So because then, I think that 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 would that would help. Being able to put another running back in there with Le'Veon Bell still on the field is advantageous for our offense, and I think Adam Gase, given his track record, will do a really good job with that. Um, by the way, did you guys see that uh, Tannehill was traded from the Dolphins yeah, so to the Titans? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I, I, wa I wonder what that does for our pick and quarterback um, with Miami. I don't know if Miami uh, so would value. trade with us. Makes I mean, it more valuable. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Because that's where we are now. It's like we. I don't want to go back all the way down to thirteen, though. I don't want to go down to thirteen no. either, because that means no. that they we have no get, starting quarterback right now. So, but they're going to have to get a quarterback. They're going to absolutely have to. I, that would have been yeah. perfect for Bridgewater. I don't know why he did not sign there. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a dumpster fire. I mean, <laughs> it it really is right now. I mean, they're yeah. selling off all their assets. You know, he doesn't want to be there for the rebuild because really they're looking for twenty twenty and 2021 drafts for quarterbacks right now. Because you can't, at number 13, feel like you're going to sit there and get a quarterback at that point that is going to be your guy going forward. I mean, you're talking about Drew Locke or somebody yeah. like that that might fall that yeah, you, that far. That's right. No, you're looking at next year and the year after at this right. point. So and they why gave him $7 million dollars to resign. Yeah. And with um, the stay with the Saints. With so the Saints. yeah, well plus job and you know, Drew could walk away tomorrow if he wanted to do that. Or he mm -hmm. could stay a couple of years and hey man, I'll just make my seven, eight million right. <laughs> and, and call it a day. Regardless, I don't think that Miami's gonna make any trades with us. It's like expecting New England to trade with us or the Bills to trade with us. Yeah, yeah I, I thought I, about I, that know, too. I That's agree. not gonna happen. But what it, but what it could, Yeah, mm -hmm. true. But what but what it does is at least what it does is um eliminate some teams from um, well, not eliminates, but it adds to the mix of the teams that are going to be vying for a quarterback. Yeah. So it's just another team. It's another that could, team which that could potentially, you know, trade up. Yeah, we, so. we, which helps us. But I think that they would probably. This is I I I think they're going to project themselves towards Arizona and maybe try to get Josh Rosen or something like that. The Giants are on that on that. You know, sm as sniffing well that out Giants right now, too, too, or something like what that. What are yeah. the Giants yeah. doing, by the way? <laughs> ah, I just had to plug that real quick. What are they podcast. doing? I don't even want to get I'm, so, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Giants and Jerks. Giants and Jerks. Giants and Jerks. Oh, boy. <laughs> Matt, Matt on the on the, the live feed comments uh, just said that uh, the Dolphins signed uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, I saw they that. Did, I, huh? saw that. I knew I that did. was a possibility. Yeah, yeah, I forgot too. about that. I'm sorry. I he is the king it. of the stopgap, and he's going to have a great first four games. He's going to bottom out. He's going to bottom out for the next uh, 12 games, and then they're going to get rid of him after that. And so, he signed for two years. Oh, okay. 
Well, yeah. well, how about Daryl? Well, that's 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 my point, right? So you're talking about wow. stopgap into 2020 and 2021, Yikes. but how what about Daryl Roberts? How about Daryl Roberts? I mean, we picked him up. Well, well, we re-signed him, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, and we didn't talk about that. Uh, three year. Yep, three year, uh, eighteen million. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, three year, eighteen million, four million guaranteed. Y you're paying him like he's a starter. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I I, I totally get that. You know, um, no you know, who knows what, what what's going to happen with that uh, and and the Dolphins. Um, but you know, frankly, you know, I I really don't care because I don't think that they're going to trade with us anyway. So basically, I'm back. He's back. Got okay. you. Right. Nice, nice. All right. So basically, um, I I think what we need to the thing that's kind of bothering me. I feel like we're losing a little leverage as far as uh, as far as people wanting to trade with us to get a QB. Yeah, because that Giants are falling out right now. Yeah. It says they're not looking at Haskins. Um, you know, we're probably not going to trade. With, I, I don't. Well, I mean, they're not. I don't know. He he said that he fought, he fell in love with the running back and he took the running back last year. They're saying right now, or all everything is pointing towards them not taking Haskins. So I don't know. I don't think he's like he holds also, his cards up type. Guy. Well, I don't know because he also said we did not sign Odell to trade him, and we they signed him last year and Odell is gone. Bro. He is a generational player. He did. He, did he is some, a generational. I mean, player. listen, I, I wouldn't have traded him, and I, yeah. and if I was the the but Jets, I'm, I would have been in on that conversation. To be I, honest with you, but you know that's that. Just me. Yeah, they gave up a first and a third. Well, the first they was seven, number lot. seventeen. So yeah. if I'm gonna move back, right? So if I move back, and then maybe we swap picks at the third round. You give me the second versus the third, and we we call it a day. I mean, I'd do that. Give me your second. We'll swap picks. I'll give you my third. I mean, I think that that's fair. Yeah, maybe fair. I I I, I would have tried to get more because, like I said, this guy's a generational player. I mean, um, they would have had to have given me two first round picks two in my first opinion rounds. this year and uh, the next year or and Jabril Peppers since you know I lost my safety. Yep. You know, and then we would have swapped like a fourth and a third or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, yeah, it's. I know. mean, we still have a lot of money left. I mean, there there's some flexibility there if we want to. Um, trade for a player that is, from the perspective of the of the current team, mm -hmm. is overpaid, yeah. and we swap out some later round draft picks for that might be we you know in line with an offensive lineman that might be in line with a pass rusher, you know that's something that we we, we have to get creative. Yeah, with with we have enough money to trade for somebody on the franchise tag. Yeah. I mean, if, we only we, we only to. spent like we only spent like what forty seven million or forty five million dollars. We're, we're, we're all good. But do understand though, we're we all good. we had the least amount of players actually under, under contract contracts. going into the season yeah. or get into the off season. So we have a lot of holes to fill right. in depth in our roster. In and addition we need to, to that, have more you know some money in reserves for our draft for our draft picks and stuff to too. And the number three draft pick is going to be pretty pretty wealthy overall. So that that number is is a cap hit too. So. So, you know, we can't spend it all, but uh, what but I we're still in a healthy place. We're still we're in a healthy place. I, we have spent, start off we have spent like, yeah. half of the cap. I don't think we've spent half of the cap space that we originally were. Sure. I think we're still a sure. nudge above $50 million. Mm -hmm. And if it's somebody, not, somebody, somebody, on, that. somebody on comments is saying, uh, Matt, Matt on comments is saying $10 million going into draft. Okay. I don't know if that's a solid number, though. I've heard nine, so I think we're in the same realm. I've heard nine just through some of my readings as far as what teams usually hold on to for the draft. Then so. you got un unrestricted free agents that after yeah. the draft too that you want to pick up. You need some money yep. for those. Um, what about Justin Houston, who's still hanging out there? I mean, he doesn't fit the age category that we normally go after, but He's you get him, you get him on a one year deal, seven mil somewhere in that range if you can get him on the cheap. Love it. So do I. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I love, love it. it. Too. I love it too. Yeah. You know? Rotational player, you know, with with Josh Allen or whatever else, and then you got maybe Jordan Jenkins on the other side, you know, rotate the three of them yeah. in. Yeah, totally. I, um, I I I don't think I don't think he's starter quality, but I think that Brandon Copeland came a long way last year just towards to improvement. Um, so um, him and Frankie Louvu 
Um, I don't know how they're gonna factor into you love a Greg Williams defense. I love Lubu too. I, Me too. I, I, I just like Lubu. I just like saying his name. It's I just hate that. his eye black. That's all. <laughs> I love his eye black. I love his eye black. I, love, I think he I, looks I, nuts. I live and, in the state like of Washington. It. I gotta. I gotta big up the Washington guys. Yeah. He tries to be like uh, John. He tries to be like John Randall and stuff. Right. With the whole eye black. Right. I love John Randall, but I hated his eye black game too. I didn't like it. I like it on him. Trying to be. Yo, John you know, Vader, you know so. who, you know who's John Randall Jr. Who? Uh, Ed Oliver. Yeah, he is. Ed Oliver in the draft. He is. He is. He is. Just don't eye black it out. Um, so hey, hey, I listen. would love to. I, I would love to have that type of, um, you know, like so little need that we yeah. can draft a guy like Ed Oliver and feel good about it, but he's going to be gone by the second round. I think. Oh, without a doubt. He's going to be gone by the mid first. So guys, so we're, we're talking heavy about free agency. Let's narrow this down. Now. What was the single biggest gain for the jets? And then what was the single biggest miss of free agency for the jets? Who wants to start that one off? I'll go with it. Par- yeah. Paradise is, uh, the, the single biggest miss, if um, if the Le'Veon Bell thing um, happened as a result of us missing out on on Paradise, it, it might be um, a little bit easier to to deal with. But um, I would have liked to have seen both of those signings occur, especially with our our cap money. Um, biggest biggest hit is I, I think it's a tie between Mosley and uh, and Bell, so. Um, I think it's. I think that what Brian said earlier about that being as significant to the defense possibly as Bell is for the offense. I, I gotta completely concur with that. I hear you. I hear you. For, well, yeah. For me, I would rate uh, Bell above Mosley because um, even though Mosley is well, you know what? L- l- let me just tell you from the top. Um, you know, basically for me, uh, the biggest hit, and you know, I was against him coming here only because I didn't trust that he would. But the biggest get is definitely, definitely Mosley. Um, Mosley because he's killing like four birds with one stone. All righty? The best running back in my you opinion. You mean Le'Veon Bell then because you said Mosley. Okay, my bad. Mm-hmm. Le- Le'Veon Bell. I was wondering where that was going. No, I got, I, I got <laughs> right. my words mixed up. My bad. Uh, mm-hmm. But Le'Veon Bell, hands down, the best acquisition, the biggest hit that the Jets um, uh, got in this free agency period uh, because we, we have the best running back. Yep. Um, we have the 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 best uh, slot wide receiver, and we have the best playmaker, hands down, in Le'Veon Bell in the NFL on our team right now. Okay, and then that can only help our young quarterback and his development. Um, it can only help with his accuracy, his confidence, yep. his everything. Yep. You know, yeah. his lack of a congealed offensive line. So all of that, you know, uh, 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 just makes our franchise, our foundation better as well as just our whole entire team so although i do love and respect cj mosley he's going to be great for the defense i don't think there's any comparison how much bigger of an effect uh Le'Veon bell has just for this whole team than say cj mosley because cj mosley he's great for the defense huge impact for the defense Le'Veon bell huge impact for the franchise in general and that's what i'm talking about now the single biggest miss I think was the fact that the New York Jets, considering that where I'm putting that I'm putting so much importance of developing a franchise and building one through the quarterback, he needs his bodyguards, and we did not get a center. Okay, and I would have been happy with uh, uh, Matt Paradis or Mitchell Morse. Mitchell Morse was the center for the Kansas City Chiefs, who started for them for four years, played extremely well. He was rated as the number six center in all of the NFL. And uh, he was a free agent, and he went to the Bills. I mean, come on, Jets. You know, we could have outbid the Bills or made it just look more attractive to get somebody like him. And then uh, Matt Paradis, who was uh, ranked as the number two center in, in, in the league um, before he had um, his injury, we could have gotten him as well. And I feel that, I think, Carrie, you were talking about this, or maybe Kyle, the, it, it, we may have put so much – stock into getting Le'Veon Bell that we neglected our other duties and that duty was getting uh, Matt Paradis and he ended up signing with the Panthers because he was waiting on the Jets. Mm -hmm. He was waiting on them and that to me bothers me and you know McCagnan come on man you're our GM you need to be able to do two things at once three things at once that's why we're paying you the money 
And that's why you we're giving delegate. you all this control. Delegate, man. <laughs> Have somebody else pick up the phone and call him up, right? So, but hey, listen, yeah, hold man. on. We're about to get this guy to sign. Just just give us one second. You know what? We're going to sweeten this deal up by $500,000 just because you're waiting. You know, something like that. I, you know, but those two things were the biggest hits and the biggest miss in my professional opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go last. I'll let you clean it up. Okay. The end. All right. <laughs> so I think our biggest get is Le'Veon. And, I mean, you mentioned – uh, the reasons as it relates to our quarterback and our quarterback is our most coveted asset right now and developing him um, goes a long way by signing Le'Veon. It takes a lot of pressure off him having to do things and, and put balls in places that he may not be able to get to, but he feels the confidence enough that he will, he will try making, making mistakes. Um, I'm not discounting the, um, the value of the offensive line because you know you I've I've spoken chapter and verse about the importance of it but what I'm saying is that the, the loss of or the the missed opportunity of not signing Paredes or uh, the other play the other center that you mentioned I think there's some viable options out there in the form of John Sullivan for the Rams in the form of Easton for the Vikings um, that are good uh, replacements at center, along with having some depth with re-signing um, Jonathan Harrison. I think the biggest miss, and this might be a controversial pick, is not re-signing Andre Roberts. When we, when our special teams, Good point. specifically our return game, has been so putrid for the last several years, this guy comes in and gives legitimacy to our entire special teams unit, both sides of the ball. He's an all pro. Can I let me let him go? Can I can I jump in on that real quick, Carrie? Absolutely. Kerry? Um, a lot of the people that would disagree with you on that, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying I'm one of them, mm-hmm. um, is would say that Brant Boyer, our special teams coach, who coincidentally came in the same time as uh, as Andre Roberts. Roberts, it is the real is is the real star in that. Okay, and he was retained. He was retained by Adam Gase. That's that's um, fair. And is still our special teams guy. That's so fair. I, so I the saw jury's a lot, out. I saw a lot. Yeah, I saw a lot of comments that said that um, that Andre Roberts was really a a product, product. of of Brant Boyer. He was coming um, off a down year. Could, he he wasn't the one making those cuts though. No no no. Uh, but he was coming. He was right. coming off. And I and I I was looking at the articles. I wanted to see our free agency last year mm. and what they thought about, you know, Terry, Teddy Bridgewater and all those people, Andre Roberts was coming off a down year. Like it wasn't something that, you know, man, he was a phenomenal returner no. and we were taking him from another team. No. Uh, so uh, there could be some credence into what Kyle, Kyle yeah. was mentioning as far as just the blocks being set up properly and things being in the right place. So we'll see ultimately if well, that look, was our, the case. Our, we, we signed our kicker off the street. Yep. Um, he wasn't he wasn't we didn't acquire him from another team. Um and he went to the Pro Bowl and he cashed in with Seattle. Um the Seattle cut so, him. So, you know. And Seattle cut him oh, to begin with, and that's yeah. where we got him from. Right. You know, so Oh really? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I didn't know that. It's crazy. So you did again that. two all pros from that unit. I mean, there might have there might be some credence into that the guy can actually coach out there. So let's see if he could do it again. Right, I mean, you know, earn your paycheck this year. Yeah, let's see who uh, they bring in to replace I, Roberts. I hear you, but I think it only goes so far because I can look at other really good special team coaches, um, like Mike Westhoff, mm-hmm. um, who was a really good special teams coach for the New York Jets, and he didn't make Jeremy Curley any better. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I feel like yes, I totally get it. I'm glad we retained this coach, but I think it only goes so far. And just like what Kerry said, you know. Coach wasn't out there cutting on those players out there like how uh, Roberts was. So, you know, um, I, I agree with what Kerry's saying as well. So it, it can only go so far, in my opinion. And the two have to but be able again, to blend together. But then again, you bring up somebody like JoJo Natson. JoJo Natson was not a great returner for the Jets, but he was a an outstanding returner for the Rams this year. And, you, you know, like they – they scored a lot of points, so they didn't kick off. They didn't, they didn't kick off uh, return as much, um, but he he was their guy for the entire year, 
And uh, they also scored a lot of points because they had good field position. I, too, I totally so. get it. And, and, um, and that's why I'm saying, but it only goes so far. Like, there are players out there oh, yeah. that a coach can sure. put in a good position sure. to have success, and they still will not succeed, i.e. Jeremy Curley. But then you have someone like Andre Roberts that the coach puts him in, in a good position, and then now he's an all-pro. Yeah. So I, I think uh, it just goes yeah. – it, it can only go so far, hmm. you know? Um, um, the, so the the rules are the rules are just different now, and um, maybe we're also seeing that coaching the new rules is going to have some sort of effect on how how it's done. You know, like we are looking at something that may be completely eliminated from the game in the next four years, yeah. uh, as far as kickoffs and punt returns are concerned. The AAF doesn't even kick off, hmm. um, and I don't know how much of that you guys have watched, but. You don't really miss it, no. Because you're getting right back into offense. You you you're you know they're going a little faster. Um, there's a lot of jets in the AAF that are actually uh, playing. Like Dylan Donahue had two sacks the other day. Um, well, that doesn't say much uh, about our our GM, to be honest with you. Yeah, he's over there if, drafting if, if, AAF he's players. Dra- right, right. He's drafting <laughs> players that are end up you know, being stars over there. That's not really saying know, much. Hackenberg is star. Well, right, right, Hackenberg right, right, can't right. even he, Donahue, can't do anything. He, he drove the wrong way down the Holland Tunnel. Yeah. So. Mm. Wait, hold Craig. on. After a night of partying. <laughs> Did you call him Phil Donahue or Dylan Donahue? What'd you call him? Phil Donahue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put him on the couch. Anyway, yeah, um, all right. So, so, so let me let, <laughs> let me let me bring it home, right? So we have um. So listen, I'm not gonna repeat everything that you guys said, but Le'Veon Bell is my my guy from a free agent perspective, um, the number one impact there. And for me, all of a sudden, Sam Darnold was the the number one guy on the offense that you had to, I guess, stop for lack of a better phrase. Yeah. Now it's Le'Veon Bell, right? Somebody that the other team's defense has to plan for. Yeah. And before, we had nobody on our team, on the offense, that anybody had to plan for. I nobody. think they kind of have to plan for like four people because they also have to plan for Crowder now. Mm-hmm. You know, you at least have to have some sort of a package or two for Crowder, um, especially since he's going to be. But you, but you play him straight up. There's nobody you had to double team. There's nobody you had to say, man, I really got to look after that guy. They, Crowder, I mean, you didn't, you know, like, oh, yeah, it'd be, it would be nice to stop him. No, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? No, I, I, I get it. But what I'm saying is Le'Veon is bringing so much. That it opens that, up it up for everybody else. Yes, you know, yeah. and then you 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 may have to be like, all right, we're not going to stop, uh, 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 Bell. So let's create packages for everyone else and see if we can suffocate them, and let's see if that works. And that's a huge if, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So got your mind working? It, yeah, exactly. Got I I, I, what, I love what, it. What happens if we get another guy in the draft that could take the top off of this defense is what I'm with saying. Robbie Anderson, Marquise um, Brown, baby? Come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Thank you, Kyle. You know what I mean? You know, this is God. It's like we planned it out. We have our own little production meeting before we kind of yeah, sit yeah. down, right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, all right. So our text stream is our production. Funny. Meeting. Yeah. Funny. Let us in the war room, Jets. Get us in the war room, baby. Um, so yeah, biggest disappointment. Um man, I, I would just I would say it's the 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 bar thing, just mm. because I I, I don't want to be the butt of jokes anymore. You know, from that perspective and yeah. us being the um, the doormat for these players to come here and to then leverage the conversation with the Jets to get a bigger contract elsewhere. So the emotional roller coaster that was that 12 hour period of time, I literally went into a meeting. I came out and I was listening to sports radio and the mood had totally changed from, man, the Jets are doing all these things and it's phenomenal. That was before the Bell signing. And now it was, oh my God, what's going on? I was like, what happened? And I listened to it. I'm like, it figures, you know, and I'm getting text messages coming in and all of that. And it's like, come on, dude, really? But, and it's more us as an organization than it is bar as a player, in my opinion. Right. So that's, that was the the biggest miss, not positionally or anything, because I feel like some of those, um, the, the the rush linebacker we're going to be able to get in the draft, the edge in the draft, uh, and I think a center you can get in the third round. I think it, you can get somebody there, and I think they they think high more highly of Harrison than we do sitting here today, but um, but that was really it for me as far as the negative. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. So, hey, hey, listen, you know, I mean, you know, since we're talking about positives and negatives, we're really going to focus on 
the positives and the negatives here with um, our Tweak Me, Peak Me segment, which we have not done in a while, but I think this free agency period warrants it. You can't, on this show, we can't get out of it, all righty? So, to me up, B. Yeah. All right, let's, let's go, go for it. Everybody do a little Irish jig. Happy St. Patrick's Day to the beat. Uh, uh. There we go. Yeah. You should have done your Irish jig, man. You're the Irish guy here. Here we go. <laughs> I, I, I'm bugging out. Of, I'm watching Kerry. I'm watching Kerry. <laughs> All righty. So uh, we are in our tweak. <laughs> We're in our tweak me, peak me. Um, so basically, I'm going to get right to it. Get what, it. Get to, I'm get going it. with the peak first. All right. Peak so me. what peaks me. Peaking. Is that I feel like this is this free agency period is the best of Mike McCagnan's tenure by far with the Jets. Yeah, hands down. <clears throat> um, there were a few hiccups like not getting a center or a pass rusher, which is kind of big. Um, also letting our Pro Bowl kick returner and our kicker go. <laughs> but when you look at what he did do right, you have to give him credit. The Jets now have the best running back in all of football in Le'Veon Bell. The Jets have the best slot receiver in all of football. In Le'Veon Bell. Jamison Crowder was the second best slot receiver in free agency behind Le'Veon Bell. You. And they got him too. So the Jets improved their defense now by getting one of the best inside linebackers in the entire NFL in C.J. Mosley. Um, football analysts put him in the same category as Luke Keekley, wow. as we can totally attest to. The guy is 26 years old. He's been to four Pro Bowls already, and he played for the hard-knocking Baltimore Ravens. The guy. That's like Ray Lewis town, you know? Like, he, he took over for Ray Lewis, basically. He did. So, you know, we know that he basically faced and lived up to that pedigree. Um, so that is fantastic. And then they also traded for a former all-pro guard in assembly that can just plug right in and, and replace a skill-diminished uh, James Carpenter. And lastly, I loved the re-signing of um, Henry Anderson, who played great for us last year. Mm -hmm. You know, so all of those things, even though the hiccups I mentioned before, and as far as McCagnan is concerned, this is a great free agency period for him as, as, as general manager. So that definitely piques me. Now, this is what tweaked me, all righty? Okay. What tweaked me is it's not missing out on the top two centers on the market. That was more of being like extremely disappointed. Um, but what actually tweaked me is the Anthony Barr committing to the Jets and then D committing to the Jets. Did I take your tweak me? I'm sorry. No, no, you didn't take my tweak me because I'm going to get into it. Okay. Because get into it. I really wanted to explode when I heard the news that Anthony Barr, you know, uh, 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 basically reneged on his deal. And, you know. Don't talk to me about, um, you know, I, I said I was going to do it, and then I started feeling sick inside. He Every, threw up in his mouth a little bit? Yeah, he threw up in his mouth. He should have just doodled <laughs> up his pants. You know what I'm saying? Because wow. I'm really... <laughs> wow. wow. Whoa. Left field wow. ish. <laughs> you got to warn me before you say well, something I mean, like hey, that. Wow. We're talking about feeling sick, and he's over uh, there. It's a family uh, show. Uh, family did you say show. a 10-2? Did you say a 10-2? I did say a 10-2. It was a 10-2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10-2 yeah. 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 out of 5. 10-2. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm Jamaican. Uh, you, gotta, you need the pre-show pre archives for that one. Get that. <laughs> Skid marks <laughs> in our one. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, <laughs> easy, easy, easy. <laughs> no, but... You know, it it made it made it didn't just make him sick. It made us as fans sick. Indeed, as well, in all of uh, Gang Green Nation, because remember now, if he would have come here, check out this lineup, guys, of our linebackers. We have Mosley and um, Williamson and Williamson Avery. Mm -hmm. playing Avery Williamson playing inside backers. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have Anthony Barr playing outside backer. And then us sitting there at three, worst case scenario, we don't trade down and we pick up Josh Allen. And now since things have changed, right, we may have an opportunity at Joey Bosa. Hmm. So it would be either Josh Allen potentially or Joey Bosa having a shot at him. Imagine that linebacker, that, 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 that linebacking core. Outside linebacker. I want bar. Josh Allen. I don't even want Bosa. You don't even yeah. want him. Huh? No, no, no. If, if Josh Allen is there and Bosa is there. I want Josh I, Allen. I want to. I, you know I what? Agree. You know what? I'm not going to complain. I, I, I'll take that. I'll take it. 
but but I that's basically I, I, why I, dis- I disagree me. on that. This 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 tweaks me, and you know what, Kyle and Brian Carey, I'll let you guys get to it, but but let me just finish up by saying, it tweaks me more when I think about a commitment, a decommitment, and then I'm already sitting back and envisioning my defensive unit with that just incredible linebacking core. Are you kidding me? Mm. Like that would be like remember the Saints back in the day when they had Sam Mills, uh, uh, they, they, like all their linebackers any were like all pros. Yeah, yeah. I f- Sam Mills and like <laughs> any other three guys. Any other three. Guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But to they were they later. were fantastic. Or maybe like the Ravens when they had uh, <clears throat> Farrier and um, whoever else. I don't oh remember. Boy, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's but a senior you know what moment. <laughs> yeah. When they had all those guys. Yeah. When they had all that those guys. We don't guys. remember that. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about this? How about LT and um? Oh and, my gosh. Uh, and, and those guys. And, 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 and <laughs> LT banks and Kyle reasons. Banks. Right. And, yep. You know. Yep. Shut reasons. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So so you know that's my peak me tweak me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Mr. Smart Alec Brian. Why don't you tell me what yours is? <laughs> um. All right. So what peaks me? What peaks me is the New York Jets on offense. And it's a third down. And how oh, many oh. choices? Decisions, decisions. How many choices does a young Sam Darnold have to go to? Are you gonna go Le'Veon Bell as he splits out wide? They better get a center so that they can execute that. Oh, easy, easy. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll let you get through your center. No, stuff. you interrupted me a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> how about that? Yeah, that's because you couldn't name it's, your linebackers, bro. I mean, it's, it's not it my was, linebackers, but linebackers through moment. the years. It was you know a good I mean? moment. Yeah, um, yeah, all right, go so for yours. so he goes out. He's taking said linebacker <laughs> <laughs> to be named later. <laughs> out in a, in a trade. outside, right? <laughs> um, and that's Le'Veon Bell out there. You got Crowder going across the middle. You got Herndon out there running around, galloping around the place. Um, then you have Anderson running all the way down the field, right? Right, right? right, right. And then you have Anuma crossing over, just bully balling his way, doing jitterbugs in the inside, to, yeah. to an open section. And then you got Marquise Brown saying, "I'm over here, I'm over here," <laughs> right? Brown. Um, as well, right? So that's what really piques me right now. The number one thing I thought we needed, and I know, t- I know, having the offensive line there was key too. I get it, but weapons. Weapons for the young quarterback. And I feel like we got the number one weapon out there on offense in free agency. So that really piques me. Um, Brian, let me, let me just stop you there. What do you think is more important if you had to rank? Like having a solid offensive line or having weapons? So the weapons are useless without the offensive line. Mm-hmm. Um but we have bodies there, and I think that you can make incremental improvements. And with the weapons, he doesn't need to hold the ball as long, which makes the offensive line better, which makes Sam Darnold better. So I think it all kind of goes into a stew. It's not like, man, we got to have all grade A, all pros on the line. The line is more of, you know, it's, they've got to be able to work together. So if you get a nice piece, and there was an article about the, the guy we got from the Raiders, and how his mentality, just like Osemily? the Colts, yeah, Osemily, is the, if we're pronouncing it correctly. To be named later, All right? <laughs> to be named later. <laughs> to be named later. Um, <laughs> no, go ahead, man. It's a, <laughs> we had to do that. Yeah. Um, so, so Osemily that we got from the Raiders, changing the attitude of the O line as a whole. The guy's nasty, right? Yeah. So his ability to say, work, play past the whistle. Right. And really driving people into the dirt like I'm going to own you all game and bringing that attitude to the other five other four people on the offensive line, I think will definitely help overall there. Um, the, the tweak me as much as for the last four or five days, it's been awesome to see the free agent signings. The reason why we have all this money to spend and the reason why we have all these holes to fill is because the GM didn't do his job to this point. So now, even though we have some great players, we still have a lot of holes to fill on the depth of this roster. And we have play players paying for the AAF, or is that is that (laughs) right? Just like um, (laughs) playing, but not playing well, but not playing well, you know, and, and what have you. So with that, the lack of confidence for the draft. And I feel a little bit better because he's on the hot seat. He's got to be at this point. But still, ultimately, the reason why we had to sign all these free agents, there was a meme where you have um, Belichick 
He's like on a beach somewhere during a free agency. Yeah, right. Diving in the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, that. Yeah. right. And the reason why he's there is because they have made good decisions on their roster. And we need to make sure our GM moving forward does the same home run performance in the draft that he just did in free agency. And then he could be sitting on the beach earning 20%. 20%. <laughs> Oh there you go, there. Die hard, baby. Die hard. Right. Get you some. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> Funny. All right. So who's up next? Who's up next? Is that carrier car. I'm up. I'm up. Go get your. I'm get up. yours. All right. I'm gonna go back to this Nick Bosa conversation real Ooh. quick, and I totally disagree with you. I I prefer Nick Bosa over Josh Allen. I think that Nick Bosa is better than Joey, and Joey is all pro. So. Um, if that's the case, that that's the guy that I want. Um, and he doesn't have a lot of mileage on him. He had that one injury that he, he kind of um, he turned in. Was it like a core uh, muscle injury before. or something like that? Yeah. Core muscle? Well, I, sports hernia or core yeah, muscle? I, something like that. Yeah. So I, I think that um, I think that the the word that I hear about him, if he's better than than Joey, then he's the guy to pick there. And he's an all he's an all round dude. Um, but I actually have also gotten, um, a little higher up on Montez sweat since you guys have been, um, have been talking about him from Mississippi state. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and that's somebody that's going to go a little further back. Um, the other thing I'm going to say here too, is that I would like to potentially draft two pass rushers in the draft. Um, one of these high end guys, and then Jalen Ferguson from La Tech. I love it. Uh, who who actually had the most sacks in college football last year? Or I think actually for a career, he has the record for sacks. Um, that that might be a guy that we can get third round or late second round. He might not even last that long. It'll, it'll pass rushes are are uh, yeah. You know they're 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 highly they're rated. Well, there's a lot of them in this draft though, so you know. Yeah, people might not be thinking like you're thinking right now. And I said I love it based on the name, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. We'd have to trade back and have a lot of draft capital in order to then get Montez Sweat and pick up Ferguson because he's probably going to go in the second round. Yeah, and I don't know if yeah. I, I spent all my capital there, but the actual player, sure, that's somebody that should be on our draft board. And if there's an opportunity somewhere that he falls, or because there's there's some off the field things with him too. Uh, he wasn't mm-hmm. he wasn't invited to the combine because of those. So with that, I mean that might be somebody if his um, if his background checks out ultimately that should be on your draft board. And uh, well, well, uh, I'm not aware of those. What, what, were, were they domestic violence uh, based? Because McCagney won't draft anybody. I think, that has that. I think. Type of rep. I think so. Uh, I think it was. There's some violence, some some sort of violence, and I, I don't want to disparage the guy's name because I don't have all the details in front of me. Yeah. Uh, but I, but he definitely wasn't invited to the combine, and and it was off the field was because of it. I'll put I'll, it to you. I'll, yeah. I'll, go ahead. I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Um, we can only trade back so far. Right. If we're considering Montez Sweat, I don't think he'll make it out of the top 10. Right. And we pick three. So if we maybe uh, who is a top 10 uh, team that could potentially be looking for a quarterback? Um, did, did this have, might be uh, it's tough. The Giants. Maybe yeah, the Giants. Might be, uh, well, and uh, I don't know. Who knows how that will shape out. Too. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But. Basically, if we trade down, I don't want to trade down past 10. I actually don't even want to trade down past 9. If we land at 9, I feel like at this stage of the game right now, we would have a good shot at getting, of course, a second rounder, which we sorely need, and then getting Montez Sweat. And if we were to get that, and then if this guy's background pans out and get the other pass rusher, I'm game for that. Plus, we already have two first, uh, two, two third round picks. We can use that to get um, a quality O-lineman. Which we need as well, so we could have two pass rushers and a, and an O lineman, and then maybe use that second, third rounder to get um, the best wide receiver available. Ooh wee! I mean, you know, <laughs> right? It, you know, that, that's 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 just the way my head's working. And maybe we can right. kind of ship off uh, Darren Lee and get another third rounder, package up two third rounders and get another second round. Wow, How about trying that? To pack, pack his bags already. Let's I don't do know. It. I, I'll pack his bags. I like him, but I'll pack I his wouldn't. bags. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, jettison Darren Lee just yet until we kind of figure out what Greg Williams wants to do with him because 
uh, Brandon, you brought it up early in the week when talking about Anthony Barr, that he was not necessarily a pass rusher. Uh, one of your sources deep in the, in the ESPN oh, world, gee whiz. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he said he's an unbelievable blitzer. Yeah. And I think that if you use Darren Lee in those types of situations, he, he is a good cover guy and he's uh, he could be a good blitzer. So I, I'm, I think the jury's out on, on that, but um, getting to peak me, tweak me. Yeah. The thing that peaks me the, the most about our free agent acquisitions is that we're going to kind of be able to look potentially like throwback Colts or throwback Rams type of offense. Like the, uh, the way that the, the Colts were with uh, Marshall Falk and uh, Edron James, um, you know, using Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell in that type of way with a Dallas Clark type receiving tight end and Hearn. Um, the question will be is who's our possession receiver going to be? Is that going to be Quincy Anunua? Um, Robbie Anderson taking off the top. Um, you know, do we have a Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne type? Uh, or even like uh, the Rams with Marshall Falk and uh, Torrey Holt type of deal. So you don't necessarily have to have the greatest receiver ever to play um, football out there when you have that that play action threat in the backfield um, or that threat to catch the ball in the backfield. You have to need somebody that runs good routes, that gets open, and uh, because – everybody will be focusing on Bell so much. The play action game is going to be really, really big for us. So that really piques me. What tweaks me is that the Vikings for two years in a row have taken our free agent period and uh, had us drive up price and then had free agents sign with them with Kirk Cousins and Anthony Barr. And I'm tweaked by the Vikings for, uh, in, in particular. I think that Anthony Barr is like a contestant on the bachelor or uh, <laughs> like uh the DeAndre Jordan with the Mavericks. He jumped the fence, um, right? He jumped the fence. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and, and you know what? You I, and I was, I was really excited when we were about to sign him, sure, because uh, because I actually liked Anthony Barr better than Miles Jack uh, at UCLA. That's a great football as... name. I love that name. That's a great linebacker's wow. name, Miles Jack. All right, sorry, I just had to say it. I love it. And he's a pretty good football. They they both turned out to be good football players. But um, yeah, I, I I was disappointed. But you know what? Good riddance. Just like Kirk Cousins, um, I will root against the Vikings every time I see them on TV, <laughs> unless I have players on fantasy in which I don't care. <laughs> yeah, and, I, I and I'll take Stephon Diggs. You want to give us Stephon Diggs? I'll take him. I'll oh take yeah, him. yeah. I yeah. don't. I don't really. I'm not tweaked about the whole Cousins thing because I think it worked out for us. And um, not having to pay that guy as much as, as much as they did, but I want to address a couple of things. The whole question about would you rather have a, a line that, in terms of the development of your quarterback or offensive weapons, in terms of you know a good running back and receiver core, I think the Giants, and 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 I, I think I go back and forth with this, but I think the Giants prove that. You know, you can put together an offensive scheme that takes advantage of your skill position, off- offensive players, um, where you don't have an offensive line that is established or um, that disagree. control. That that happened at the end, towards the end of the season with the Giants. You know, um, they didn't have an offensive line that was in the earlier part of the year legitimate. Right, and Eli struggled. And the he, entire Eli, time. Eli struggled towards the beginning of the year, but towards the towards the end of the year, they be they they began to um, develop and they began to scheme where um, um, their running back, mm-hmm. who name escapes me right, right now, same, yeah, same yeah, type yeah, of thing. It's all right. Um, <laughs> who is Saquon, Saquon. Who is who is all who was all pro? Yeah. You know, all pro ish. Yeah. Um, and they were able to do a lot of things. Yeah. So I think the, the I think the, the the level of importance that lies with having those skill position players uh, is elevated. I hear right? you. If I could just interject real quick mm-hmm. on on in that point of view, look at the Indianapolis Colts. Um, Andrew Luck had less to work with once they got that All Pro mm-hmm. lineman in there, and he was able to kind of gel with the rest of the O mm-hmm. lineman. We saw Andrew Luck have probably his best season 
of his entire mm-hmm. career. Um, he threw uh, tons of touchdowns. He had a great year and was able to push his team forward in the playoff picture. Mm-hmm. So, and that was not because of the weapons. It was because of the O line. I'm uh, not entirely because right. of the weapons. But they, they had they had they had significant offensive weapons they on did. that field too. They did, but you, you can't know what? discount that. I'm not going to discount it, but it's not like they had the Giants' weapons. No, no, they did you not. No, they did not. But what I'm saying is that there, there was a balance there. There was a balance there. Um, their offensive line, you like you said, gelled and they were dominant, right? Yeah. But they, but it's not like they didn't have significant offensive weapons in terms of receivers too, that's true right because, when they played us mm-hmm. when they played us we beat them right right but it was more so because it wasn't because of their offensive line per se right you know because i think we, we pretty much manhandled um i think we had scheme them. i think we had right. coached them and everything yeah. right yeah. but but we still had problems with their receivers right we still had problems with their receivers because we have no pass rush right so yeah. because their line did a great job not that game well, not at all. Not that, that game. game. Did we sack him a lot? I mm-hmm. don't remember. We did. We mm-hmm. we hurried him. We mm-hmm. we we scored a, a defensive touchdown on the what was the first play of the game? Okay. Right. Okay. Um, only reason I remember because I was at that game. Right. 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 So I I, I, I could see it close up showing what off. what we were doing to them. You showing off? I was, I was on the field too. Did I tell you that? <laughs> yeah. I was on the field? Anyway, you caught a pass too, right? right? <laughs> no, 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 I was. He was I, one of the offensive weapons right. playing yeah, for the Colts. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> field level, baby. Guys, but, just just uh, jumping in here. Uh, yeah. We have an incredible amount of action on our comment section nice. today uh, just to, to get to some of it. Um, they're going crazy that we're not mentioning the fact that Montez Sweat has a heart condition. Um, really? And I didn't I, I didn't know that information. Me neither. Uh, Thank think, you to whomever said I, that. I, mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's uh, fairly recent info. Um, yeah, it is. And it just for, popped up three minutes ago. Wow. The, the, Fer- the Ferguson... The Ferguson... Uh, incident that kept him out of the combine was a, a fight his freshman year at a McDonald's oh. that he got a, a battery charge for. So uh, he's still high on my board. Tell you yeah, that. Okay. I'll tell you that too. I mean, if he had a fight at a yeah. Wendy's, I'd be like, chill, you know, you might need to drop. But or a Taco different... Bell, why, what are you doing there? Yeah, yeah like, you know, like Wendy, why, Wendy, why are you Wendy, running Wendy, to that border? If it's Chick fil A. Well, uh, in no. 19, I think, I think in 1997, <laughs> I was part of a. Uh, I can understand uh, Chick fil A. Love Chick fil A. I can understand Chick fil A. Chick fil A, you got to go. Yeah. They ran out of nuggets. <laughs> like, what do you mean you run out of nuggets, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say, out of us, I, I am an expert on chicken nuggets. I was part of a focus group in 1997 oh on the best chicken nugget mm-hmm. for an advertising agency. And uh, that must have been for college credit. That must have no, been no, for college credit. I, I was I was working. I got paid for it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and uh, and and the the consensus Uh-oh. in 1997 was that the best chicken nugget was from Wendy's. Blind they do. Taste test. They do. They do. Uh, they do. So now, and they have like the spicy it's the chicken seasoning. Now. They, it's the they seasoning. spicy chicken nugget now. <laughs> wait, wait. Do you have a tweak me? Yeah, I do. Okay. I have a peak me and a tweak me. Oh, okay. I, have, I have more like a excited to see Ooh. and a worried about what's going to happen. Wow. Right. So I have an excited to see Le'Veon on the field. I am yeah. excited I'm, emoji. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait till the, the first time he touches the ball mm-hmm. and make somebody miss. It's, yeah. it's, it's going to the cockles on my the back are just going to raise right there what? anyway look it, up. look it up it's a word it's a word <laughs> <laughs> is that pneumonia <laughs> is that a disease right <laughs> right can you cure it with some bleach anyway and the next thing <laughs> i like i'm worried about is the fact that andre roberts is not going to be on the field um that's i think that I, i'm i'm a little i'm a lot tweaked and worried about that mm-hmm. and i want to see what's going to happen as a result and i'm Looking forward to seeing if, like you said, our special teams coordinator is going to be able to, you know, create the magic that happened last year mm-hmm. as a result of, of those two players that we mentioned leaving. Sure. So, okay, that's that. Yeah, man. So, I mean, guys, um, has everyone gone as far as I tweak me, peek me? I believe we all have. Probably yeah. twice. Probably yeah. twice because yeah. we've really, you know, unpacked this a lot. So tweaked. Yeah, man. Now, yeah, me too. Triggered. Anthony Barr. I'm so triggered. I need a safe <laughs> space. Um, safe space. Yeah. So, guys, so pretty much the meat and potatoes of the free agency period has kind of passed. We kind of know where we are. What do we, when I say we, what do the Jets need to do 
in the draft to complement what has already been done in free agency by McCagan. I'll take that first. So, and, and it's going to be short for me. So yeah. pass rusher in the first round, definitely. If you stay at three, then Josh Allen is it. Uh, if you move back, I mean, Montez Sweat was the person that I would say, uh, but you have to understand his um, his limitations from a medical perspective. So we'll we see what that look looks that like. Yeah, we don't, we look we don't, that right, we don't know the um, specifics yet. What I would say is just tactically, um, obviously you want to move back if possible. If not, I am so okay with staying there and taking Josh Allen, right? Um, if if they don't take the quarterback number one, you know, meaning the Arizona Cardinals, and it's all defense, and Quinnen Williams is there at number three after Bosa and Allen are gone, I'm kind of okay if we can't trade back. I'm okay taking Quinnen Williams as well, right, number three. That that's me over Bosa. No, no, no. If Bosa and Allen are gone, oh, okay, right, one and one and two. Yeah, and Quentin Williams is there. I'm okay with taking him number three. Um, now what I would say is that if we don't move back in the first round and don't have extra picks, package a third and a fifth in order to move into the back end of the second round. You know, package uh, a seventh or, or and a third in order to move into the second round or or higher than a third. I don't need all of these picks. I need quality guys coming in that can – somebody you targeted, not just fell to you, right? This is my guy. Go get him. Go get an offensive center. Go get a, um, you know, a, 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 a weapon, another weapon on the outside, on the offense. I don't need all of these picks yes. at the end of the day. And um, then you pick up some undrafted free agents in order to kind of fill out the roster and some folks that you can get there. But tactically, that's what I would definitely do as far as the draft is concerned if we can't trade back. Yep. I would be super, super upset if we drafted a D tackle at three. That's my personal opinion. Um, we, We drafted a D tackle in first three rounds last year. Um, who you know, we still have on the team. Uh, we re-signed, um, what's his name? I Henry Mike Anderson. Pennell. No, uh, Pennell's not with us. Um, no, it's the, uh, the other guy then. Um, yeah, the, the guy, guy that we got from the Steelers. Yeah. McClendon. Oh, McClendon, yeah. Yeah, McClendon. Uh, uh, we, have, we have Big Cat still. I, 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 would, I would be totally, I would much rather move out of that spot than draft a, a D-tackle. It's it's just to me it's it's just the the value even if it's a a really is it a generational guy Cause we because Dwayne Robertson was a generational guy you remember him sure is he do. still playing the league fourth pick yeah out of Kentucky I remember um, that when- we, we three three year we're we're at the end of a rookie deal on a generational guy um, I just think that it's it's too it's it, it's too hit or miss of a of a position. Um, I'm not even worried two. about that, Kyle, because you know what? I really do think that Arizona is going to really try to pick um, uh, the, the quarterback yep. out of Oklahoma. They are. And then now it's, you know, two, three players for two picks. And that means either Joey Bosa or Josh Allen would have to land at the three spot if we're not able to trade down. So I actually feel good about uh, that. Now, do I feel good about McCagan saying yes we're going to pick one of those two rather than Q that's another argument but um, you know if if we were the if any of us were the general managers and either one of those guys were there I think we'd pick Bosa or Josh Allen over Q but I do like Q though I like him a lot I think I think we established on the the text stream that I think that Brian would make a better general manager than you I think that was established. Uh, that was established. You know uh, what? That kind of you know what? <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I would hands yeah. down be the best GM uh-huh. because, like <laughs> I said, my argument, you know what I'm saying, which goes against yours, Kyle, is that I was the one that said, and against Brian's, I was the only one that did not want Kirk Cousins. All right? And mm-hmm. I was the one that wanted Baker Mayfield. No, no, no. no. Yeah, no. Baker Mayfield. And, I know you wanted yeah, Baker yeah. Mayfield, oh, yeah. but oh, – yeah. But I completely discarded Cousins, and I said Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield, and then I said if not Baker Mayfield, then uh, then Darnold. But I was gung ho for Baker Mayfield. Not saying that you weren't, mm-hmm. but you did want Cousins oh, before yeah. Baker Mayfield. Absolutely, I'm the better GM, hands down, and I just proved it. You guys got to be kidding me. Get out of here! Wow. <laughs> just, just like that Brian, was, just like Brian said, just like Brian said, you're too, you're too emotional. <laughs> right. You got to cut somebody because they insulted you. 
<laughs> you still didn't want Le'Veon until he actually signed the paperwork. Well, you know right. what? No, no, no. Hold yeah. on. I, I needed to see this, all righty, because I didn't trust Le'Veon. This is what I needed to see because all he sat Le'Veon, out. Le'Veon, smiley emoji. He sat out <laughs> all of 2018 where everybody thought, oh, well, maybe after eight games he'll come back, and he sat out. Okay, fine. You did your thing. You wanted to sit out. But me as a fan and as a, you know, pessimistic New York Jets fan, I got to have a little bit of trust. It's funny. And then plus so, he didn't – he was dissing the Jets too. So I was like – it's not. So I, he'd I, have that face on and you'd be on the other side with your current face on looking angry. No, I'd be while like he's, this. While he's signing like, no, yeah, no, I'm happy. He'd be no, like – No, no, I wouldn't uh, be. Yeah, right. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. I can't wait you know till that guy comes on your show. I'm telling you, I wanted him. I can't him. wait I till that guy's in that studio. Can't wait till that guy is in that studio. <laughs> can't wait till Bell is in studio. I am down. Can't too. wait, man. <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> what, what that face says to me is guaranteed money. That's what it says. To oh, me. absolutely. Sure does. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed money. And but, he got but less than he wanted. But not overpaid. That's true. Exactly. Exactly. He got less than what he thought. So he borderline. You know, well, whatever. I'm not, I'm not even mad at him. It. He 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 bet on himself. Yeah, that's I fine. Have no problems. I with love that. it. No I problems. I love it. He that. just didn't come out as on top as he wanted to. No. But hey, right. he's still a multimillionaire, right? Sure, that's fine. He's got something to prove. Yeah. To himself. Yeah. What what do you feel like the the draft should should entail? Um, I I I think that we should. Priority number one, I still think that we should uh, focus on trading down to accumulate more picks. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, we should not fall below the ninth or the 10th. 